If you are looking for the best Nikon cameras, you are in the right place. We have tried to include in-depth information on Nikon cameras in our video, which will be enough to fulfill all of your needs. All of them are maintaining their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturer, and real customer feedback. If you want to buy a Nikon cameras, we think this list will be very worthy to you. Now, let's get started with the video. At the first position of our list, we have Nikon Z9. Here, at long last, is a shot across the bows of Canon and Sony, the Nikon Z9, the firm's latest pro mirrorless camera, and a startling step forward for professional imaging. Taking full advantage of the Nikon Z mount, with its short flange distance and large throat diameter, the Nikon Z9 boasts an intimidating set of features. It's capable of burst shooting at a face-melting 120ths for one, and its buffer can record a nominal 1,000 images per burst, with Nikon recording it being capable of as many as 5,000 when used with a high-spec CF Express card. It also uses deep learning AF, meaning its focusing ability should get better over time, and the backside illuminated sensor delivers superior low-light performance. However, while this camera is still on pre-order with arrival imminent, there's one drawback we do have to mention. Several of its headline features like 8K6 type video and the compressed high efficiency NRAW format are not going to be available at launch, but will come in a firmware update expected later in 2022. Nikon is not the only manufacturer doing this, but it's still a trend we're not fans of. We've been impressed with what we've seen so far of the Nikon Z9 and we'll update this guide once we've published our full review. Moving on to the next at number two with Nikon Z FC. This dreamy camera doesn't just look cool. It's also one of the best beginner to mid-range cameras around. With an APS-C sensor and a sophisticated processor, the Nikon ZFC is a highly capable camera for image makers of all stripes, even if it misses out on a few features like a built-in flash. It's a little pricier than its stablemate, the Nikon Z50. And if you don't care about looks, then you may want to consider the camera instead, as it's basically the same deal. However, we're utterly charmed by the style and presentation of the Nikon ZFC. Can't resist the look and feel of the best retro cameras. Then look no further. The Nikon Z FC will suit you down to the ground. The number three position is held by Nikon Z5. It took Nikon a little while to come out with a really solid entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera. But the firm smashed it out of the park with the Z5. IT takes design cues from its pricier siblings, the Zix and Z, more on which to come shortly. But make some sensible additions like a beginner-friendly mode dial. It produces fantastic-looking images, and having a full-frame sensor with a sophisticated Z-mount is a tough combo to argue with. It makes a few compromises, lacking the Zix's back-illuminated sensor and suffering a 1.7x crop on its 4K video. But these sacrifices are what enabled the Z5's real ace in the hole, its tempting price tag. This camera represents significantly better value in our book than its rivals like the Canon EOS RP and Sony Alpha A7 Roman II and the price is continuing to drop, meaning it's worth considering over APS-C alternatives like the Z50 and the ZFC. Next, at number 4, we have Nikon Z50. The Nikon Z50 is a much smaller camera than the Zix Roman II and Zevin Roman II, but it clearly shares the same design DNA. Despite its small size, it has a good grip and good external controls, and the retracting 16 15 kit lens is Remarkable not just for its pancake lens dimensions, but for its overall performance. Nikon may have come to the APS-C mirrorless market comparatively late, but it's coming with a camera that has so many good points it's hard to know where to start. But we will highlight the 4K video, 11th shooting, and the fact that its E-mount is identical to that on the larger cameras, so you can use dedicated Nikkor Z DX lenses, full-frame Nikkor Z lenses, and regular Nikon DSLR lenses via the FTZ adapter. Best of all, the Z50 is terrific value, especially when bought as a twin lens kit. This is a great value camera for both beginners and enthusiasts, though we would like to see a few more DX lenses coming out. The number 5 position is held by Nikon Zix Roman II. The Nikon Zix Roman II is a light refresh of the original Zix, with a second memory card slot and processor bringing a bump to burst shooting, now up to 14 and the ability to record 4K video at 6 diffs. However, the camera still lacks an articulating screen, limiting its appeal for video and vlogging. 
Existing Zix owners won't see a need to upgrade, but new buyers will get a terrific all-round camera at a pretty good price, and this camera's build quality, design and handling are excellent, as is its in body stabilization. For those who want resolution above video and affordability, the Nikon 7 Roman 2. Below would be our recommendation. The number 6 position is dominated by Nikon 7 Roman 2. The 7 Roman 2 is Nikon's flagship full frame mirrorless camera. All the changes that we've seen on the 7 Roman 2 compared to the original 7 are certainly welcome. But we can't help feeling that Nikon's played it a bit safe with its second Gen Z cameras. We'd like to have seen even more of a jump to really make it a serious threat to the likes of the Canon EOS R5 and Alpha A7R Roman 4. But still, the Nikon 7 Roman 2 has a lot going for it. It might not have a standout feature that sets it apart from its competitors, but the Nikon 7 Roman 2 delivers solidly across the board and is a great mirrorless camera. Nikon changes, dual processors, and dual memory card slots, for example, have made a great camera even better. And don't forget the growing selection of terrific Z-mount lenses now available for Nikon Z cameras. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Nikon D3500. While you're still learning photography and deciding what sort of camera will suit you best, you should pick a camera that's simple enough to understand straight away and affordable enough that you can change your mind and swap later if you decide you need something different. The D3500 is the entry-level model in Nikon's DSLR range, but it has a 24.2MP sensor as good as those in cameras at twice the price, and it offers a very good 5 if continuous shooting speed for a starter camera. The guide mode will help beginners get started and understand the basic principles, but the D3500 has all the manual controls you need to learn about photography as you improve your skills. It's sometimes sold a little cheaper with a non-VR, non-stabilized kit lens, but it's definitely worth paying a little more to get the VR version. The number 8 position is held by Nikon D7500. Nikon fans ready to step up from a beginner-orientated model should look at the Nikon D7500. It's a larger, more rugged camera that offers 8th continuous shooting. Nikon's highly regarded 51-point autofocus system and the ability to capture 4K video. It has a tilting rear screen rather than the fully articulated design on the Nikon D5600, so vertical shots are trickier, but it's fine for video and horizontal shooting. The D7500 is a lower resolution sensor than the D5 1620 MP vs 24 MP but it's a newer design taken from the pro-grade D500 that sacrifices a few megapixels in exchange for better image quality at higher ISO settings and faster all-round image capture. Next at number 980, the Nikon D780 takes the on-sensor phase detection autofocus of the Nikon Z, resulting in a DSLR with a live view autofocus speed of a mirrorless camera's brilliant. Essentially, the D780 is like a modernized, supercharged version of Nikon's still popular D750 full-frame DSLR. The D780 doesn't just have advanced live view AF. It also comes with a high-resolution tilting touchscreen display, 4K UHD video, dual as Roman 2 compatible memory card slots, and continuous shooting speeds up to 12 ifs in live view mode. Combine that with its solid design and comfortable grip, and you've got a camera that's an instant classic. But the D780 also reminds us just, just how good and comparatively cheap the older Nikon D750 still is. If all you need is a classic, good value full-frame DSLR for still shooting, the D750 remains a great buy. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Nikon D850. Mirrorless camera fans will often complain about the size and weight of DSLRs, and they have a point. The Nikon D850 is a big bruiser of a camera compared to Nikon Z models, but this size works in your favor if you're shooting with big, heavy lenses, and most pro lenses are big and heavy. This is a handling factor that many mirrorless users don't take into account. Being a DSLR, the D850 has a bright, clear optical viewfinder that many photographers still prefer over a digital display. No matter how good the latter, the date 150's 45.7 megapixel sensor produces quite superb image quality. Yet it can still maintain a shooting speed of 7 frames per second, or 9 frames per second with the optional battery grip. Even without the grip, the date 150 has an amazing battery life of 1,840 shots, far more than any mirrorless rivals. And it comes with two memory card slots, 
one for an XQD slash CF Express card, and one for regular SD slash SDHC slash SDXC. That's all for today. All the product links in the description down below. We upload videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the upcoming video notification.